good afternoon everyone um, today uh, i would like to welcome you all for this session on engineering um, especially electronics electrical and uh, w electrical engineering so we i would like to welcome the speaker of the day dr laviraj gupta vice pro vice chancellor lovely professional university he holds a phd in bioinformatics mtech in computer aided design and interactive graphics from iit kanpur be honors mechanical engineering from mits gwalior 50 plus certifications to his back research areas in robotics mechatronics bioinformatics internet of things artificial intelligence machine learning using tensorflow and gamification uh he has authored seven books on iot mobile robotic platforms biomedical sensors and machine learning and data analytics 150 plus patents 100 plus published and 10 granted indian and australian some of them are in the areas as bagomoto powerless lift mechanism seta by and kavaj i welcome you sir thank you thank you uh, mr rishi thank you professor rishi uh, we also have with us um, uh, ms rachna bajaj senior assistant lovely professional university she'll uh, be delivering the information regarding um, the eligibility fee scholarship and infrastructure of the university it's now over to dr laviraj gupta for his content of the day uh thank you professor rishi uh, a very good afternoon to everybody present uh, basically you know in coming 15 20 minutes i'll be talking about see the the title written here is engineering then now and the future why i have chosen this particular title specifically for electronics electronics and communication and electrical engineering because the major shift in technology has happened with a perfect blend of computation and electronics as an engineering so the engineering which has evolved from previous years or past years as of today and the engineering or technology which is actually going to take up the futuristic form would only be possible by electronics and electrical engineers of today so let me talk about the evolution let us let us talk about how evolution happens and how technology builds up time and on earlier the humans they used to slide objects be it rocks be it you know be it any of the uh, items which they have to shift from one location to other location they used to slide that particular object while they are sliding the object used to slid or they uh, they push it sliding or sliding over the ground then some uh, you know some thoughtful individual thoughtful human then thought of creating some rollers pegs of rollers and then the objects were moved over these rollers the evolution is very very simple and it is very scientific that they converted a sliding friction into a rolling friction the rolling friction of any of the object or any of the movement in encountering rolling friction would always be quite less than that of sliding because the area coming in contact uh, over the sliding surface would be pretty less then they converted these rollers because there was instability and the rollers was were to be used forth and ahead uh, each time uh, the object is moving so what they did is they created a permanent roller which can roll over and which is associated with the rolling then they created better forms of roller with spokes and better efficiency and effectiveness and then finally we are presently here that the wheels beneath the spacecraft or the aircraft has evolved 
so the evolution started from the logs of wood used as a roller to move the things and now these kind of uh, you know wheels they are put beneath the spacecraft or the huge aircrafts this is what i call the evolution i'll give you an example which is which is more pertaining to technology this was a philosophical example of evolution i'll give you the technological example of evolution people used to measure time they started with sundials then they used water clocks then they use sand clocks and then then they finally use gears and gear mechanism to display the time in the most most appropriate way most visible visible way they didn't stop there they wanted this clock to be carried by an individual at any given point of time thus they crafted a wrist watch out of it now i'll talk about this was this was primarily uh, the the evolution of time being displayed or time being measured and displayed together uh, before uh, before 20th century but in 20th century what happened people crafted devices now this is a device there is no more a clock this displays and measures the time but this is one of the 100th capacity of this device this device has further capacities of of you know measuring your blood pressure measuring your pulse rate measuring your activities or capturing your activities your running your sitting your sleeping your sleeping style and what not now this is the power of evolution this is the power how technology changes how technology shifts from one arena or from one tenet or from one percept to another percept things which are going to happen in future are something like this that there will be a wristband simply a wristband which would have a capacity to display the entire screen so this gadget is not just simply having a very limited scope of display this would have a, a widened scope of display wherein you can use your internet over the above wrist kind of an area so i talked about evolution till a particular level till today and i also talked about what is going to happen in future let us move a, move a little more in communication and technology people started talking to each other this was the first form of evolution then telephony came into picture we used to call it as pstn public switch telephony network then there were billboards which came into picture then there came the television and then came the computer personal computers which came into picture and now all your mobile phones they are capable of having the power of computing of having the privilege of getting connected anywhere anytime this gave rise to revolutions or we call it as revolution there are four revolutions which happened we are in the era of industry 4.0 the first revolution in industry rather i'll call it as manufacturing happened as industry 1.0 which happened when the people started or humans started using water and steam for mechanized production prior to this everything was handmade everything was built by using human power human hands and feet and what not when humans started using water and steam they came up with mechanized production and then that became the industry revolution 1.0 then they started using electricity for mass production then came the mass production and this was revolution or industrial revolution 2.0 then came industrial revolution 3.0 which was built upon your area and your interest of discipline that is electronics and information technology being blended together for automating the production and now we are in the era of automation and data exchange rather it is called as digitalization of production this particular thing would depict that how the entire process got evolved and the role of evolution is by the engineers see engineers at this time should should have focused on just water and stream but you know people who were beyond this particular thing was looking to a usage of electric power when the engineers electronics or electrical engineers were in making here they were thinking of micro electronics they were thinking of electronics thus they were prepared not just simply for their revolution but they were prepared for the next revolution also when 
the engineers were in making when the era was industry 3.0 and people who looked into data exchange data driven uh, you know processes and then they only can craft or curate or nurture industry 4.0 this can only be done through something called as cyber physical systems now these systems are the systems which has these are physical systems but these have the capabilities of computing within themselves creating decisions and they are connected so that they can take decisions take data from somewhere else and communicate the decision to some other location as well this is i call it as ubiquity of computation and connectivity anything and any device is connected and has got the capability of computing anyone and anybody is connected any context any time uh, one is connected and there is a power of computation or there is a power of decision making based on computation is available and this people refer to as the internet of things the awesomeness by internet of things is brought in in various ways we all know that now people are talking about smart homes now people are talking about smart healthcare the healthcare which is completely driven by electronics by data capture through electronics even your pulse rate your ecgs your brain waves uh, your all biological parameters are captured electronically people are talking smart highways so that you know these highways can capture the density or the number of cars or number of vehicles moving from one side to another and they can actually remodel themselves based on the density smart agriculture is the new form of living people are using drones people are using uh, geographical information systems people are using a uh, lot of electronics and sensors and iot devices for better yield and less cost of yield in agriculture the smart devices are are the future wherein people are talking about hybrid vehicles people are talking about electric vehicles people are talking about autonomous driverless vehicles and they have created devices like home automation device like uh, alexa or siri or uh, google home are one of the one of the you know niche niche technologies available so when devices they start talking to device means any device who has got the capability and capacity of computation and is connected to the net can talk to another device now devices are talking to the device people call it as mmi machine machine interaction your mobile phone can talk to your laptop your laptop and mobile phone they both can interact with your smart washing machine and that smart washing machine can talk to your smart refrigerator because all of them have got the capacity of computing within themselves and all of them are connected to net when devices started talking to device there are whole load of opportunities which you can harness as an electronic electronics engineer because load of loads of data being generated when devices are talking to each other each time they interact with each other uh, a segment of data is generated so loads and loads of data is generated every second and you need to you need to have devices you need to have frameworks to capture and archive these data so you can you can be into cloud you can be into fog uh, computing kind of thing you can be into edge devices for electronics engineer you can you can devise you can create new forms of clouds new forms of fog new forms of edge computing devices you can work in artificial intelligence because now you can design a a, a sensor which can capture uh, my my eyelids which can capture uh, the the blink of my eyelids and by the by that blink of my eyelids you can you can very well assess my mood smart home or uh, smart industry or smart automated industry or smart homes are going to be the new form of living you can build your career uh, creating data capturing devices creating data accumulating devices creating data decision making devices uh, using electronics when all all this data is available but there is no authenticity of what is happening how it is happening and from where it got initiated you have got a whole load of opportunity to work with blockchain kind of things tomorrow is going to be mixed reality tomorrow is going to be driven by mixed reality you you can talk about augmented reality you can talk about 
uh, virtual reality you can talk about mixed reality but tomorrow is the the era of mixed reality and only the electronics or embedded system driven devices can make this thing happen they are talking about baby ais they are talking about artificial intelligence algorithms being created by ai algorithms without human intervention this all has to be implemented in healthcare be it electronics high end electronics this all is to be implemented in agriculture this all is to be implemented in transportation and movement that is where the engineers who are going to study electronics engineering today should be knowing the basic fundamentals and principles of electronics engineering but they also should be aware about how things have evolved so that they can actually plan for the future uh, devices and future gadgets i'll give you the, one of the most perfect examples of this kind of fusion which have, which is happening and that's nothing but hyperloop till uh, Five years down the line, it was just a science fiction, but now it is it is happening. And all the data being captured for its control, for its movements, is completely dependent on electronics. The magnetic levi levitation principle is belonging to the electronics people. So, look into all these, and basically understanding that electronics and electrical engineering students today should not only be ready with the basic principles postulates and theories but they also need to be ready with what is happening in latest in the present scenario and what is going to be the future trend for this we call it as engineering at lpu and we think future thus we built a transdisciplinary research being an electronics engineer you can very well talk to an agriculture student you can really talk to uh, maybe a physiotherapy student and you can uh, create devices for for maybe better better agriculture or better uh, production or better physiotherapy kind of uh, things we think technology shift thus we created advanced labs in lpu you're going to encounter advanced labs in center of excellences like like anything uh, the industries like uh, uh, Siemens, Intel, uh, Texas Instruments, Omron, uh, and Bosch, they all have they all have their presence either in industry curriculum, uh, industry inclusivity in curriculum designing, delivery, and whatnot. And to match up to your expectations, we have the best of the faculty. And one very important thing which we have understood that until and unless you do experiential learning, until and unless you you implement what you learned in the classes onto the real breadboard or the circuit board, you'll not be able to learn that much. So in and in, we will make you think smart. Think big is our credo, but in association with think big, we'll make you think smart. Make you think smart. So uh, with all these things that uh, I talked about how evolution technology is evolving, how basically uh, the evolution in technology has resulted in smart homes, smart agriculture, smart highways and whatnot. And what is the future? The future is maybe Hyperloop or something like that. And what at LPU we do, we think technology shift, we think expectations, we think of uh, beyond the curriculum kind of thing. For having done, having said, I'll, I'll now showcase that with all these efforts, what the students of electrical and electronics have done. You know what they've done is they have created products. Now this, what I'm showing you is a product. During COVID times, you might have heard it uh, umpteen times that people say that you need to rub your hands for 20 seconds before you wash it after, after applying the soap. Now nobody carries uh, the wristwatch or clock to the washroom. So what students of electronics and electrical engineering based on their experiential learning, based on their project based learning, based on their, you know, uh, uh, ideation kind of philosophy, uh, what they did is they created something called as 20 seconds for life. It is a very small device or a gadget which is connected to the net. And when you press the uh, piston of the soap dispenser, it will play music. It can also be uh playing a, a song of your choice it can also play the entire script in any of the vernacular languages 
the students have built in one of the most wonderful uh, innovations during uh, COVID times that they have built in a smart interactive dustbin. Now this dustbin is implemented uh, at one or two locations for COVID wards and human intervention is completely negated. Uh, an individual or a, uh, or, a, or a person infected with COVID is sitting on bed number 30. It says, uh, Ellie, please come to bed number 30. Ellie, Ellie moves on and goes to bed number 30, collects the, uh, does, uh, collects the garbage and comes back to its location. And finally, at the end of the day, it actually disposes garbage at a given location. Now, these are the kind of things, you know, which surely make you ready not for the technology which is prevailing, which is in use today, but it also prepares you for the future. Because by the time by the time you're going to graduate, if you take admission in 2022, you're going to graduate in 2026, things might have completely changed in, in coming four years. So it is not that that you need to be ready for what technology, what electronics, what embedded systems, what IoT, what IIoT, what uh, IOE is talking about. You are not supposed to just simply know that you are sim you are also about to learn, or you should be learning what is going to be future. Maybe uh, next year, five years down the line, or ten year ten years down the line. So we have got the cup cut above the rest. We focus on learning by doing, as I earlier mentioned that you will be to work on projects so that whatsoever you are learning inside a classroom is converted or translated into a project so that a you learn the concepts of the class best and second b that you have a project or number of projects to be put into your resume and the industry is going to look yes this is the individual who has done lots of projects we will let you explore transdisciplinary domains, meaning thereby not just simply electronics. You will be you will be given an opportunity through maybe your minors or through your open electives to explore various other disciplines like agriculture, fashion technology, where you can implement your learning and understanding of electronics for the better processes and procedures in their domain. We'll let you participate in loads of international events so that you understand how the technology is shifting, what people are thinking about the problem statements. We'll let you build your strong digital presence. All the projects which you develop, we'll put it uh, on, the, on the media, social media. You are, you are going to put on social media. You are going to put all your programs onto GitHub profile. You, you are going to create your own GitHub profile or Bitbucket profile, or you're going to create your own you know, professional circuitry profiles on various platforms so that your digital presence would let you promote yourself to the companies, to the dream companies where you want to work, like Intel, Texas Instruments, or maybe Boeing's of the tomorrow, uh, Tesla's of the tomorrow kind of thing. So we will ensure that we are going to co-create the magic which you are looking forward for your career. I welcome you to this world of Think Big, and uh, thank you so much. I'll be open for any kind of uh, you know queries. So the house is now open for any kind of queries. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, it was uh, very interesting uh, and wonderful watching you talking on the evolution, uh, the awesomeness of IoT. You explained the engineering at LPU, uh, showing a few innovative projects and also the digital presence, which is highly required nowadays. Thank you so much, sir. Quickly, I'll be taking up a few of the queries. I know you have a very busy schedule. Uh, before that, uh, I would like uh, to take a few questions from the audience. Um, sir, uh, uh, Kailash wants to know, what specializations are being offered by LPU in ECE specifically? Uh, the specializations can be robotics, Internet of Things, uh, can be you know even satellite or uh, satellite kind of thing we are uh, we have uh, we have aspired to put up uh, our own satellite into the space we have got uh, uh, electric vehicles hybrid vehicles as specialization we've got embedded systems we have got communication uh, we have got networks and in electrical we have got power grids smart power grids what's not kalash i hope uh, you are happy with the list as shared by 
Dr. Lavidaj Gupta. Uh, moving quickly to the next question, that seems to be very, very interesting by Raman. Uh, Raman says, as all my friends are opting for CSC, uh, but I want to get into ECE, but I'm afraid if there would be any demand in the industry, when I'll be passing out. See, I used a word called transdisciplinary approach. Industry does not demand individual with specific set of skills. Industry demands an individual with flavor of multi disciplines together. So if you decide to choose electronics, you can very well branch out to computer science at any given point of time. You can branch out to you know food technology. With your electronics understanding, if you're branching out to food technology, you'll be the best individual for companies like Bosch to design and implement the home solutions. If you branch out to agriculture, you will be the one who will be sought after by all, all agriculture companies who are trying to implement drone technology into their field. Electronics is the very basic foundational engineering on which you can build up any of the you know uh, skills or discipline oriented spread you can build in. Electronics will always be in demand. I talked during my presentation that whatsoever technological shift has happened from wristwatch to the smartwatch, the entire gamut is built on electronics only. From, from normal cars to Tesla cars, everything is dependent on electronics only. You need to see whether you are just simply want to want to be aware of what electronics is or you want to take your electronics understanding to various disciplines and become more you know more pronounceable but electronics the demand is never ever going to be uh you know in cusp it will always be there wonderful wonderful sir uh, thank you for motivating the attendees over here they, they i see a lot of queries regarding the same they are in a dilemma whether to go for uh, this branch or not as per the demand uh, in the industry a quick uh, next question is from padam uh, Padam wants to uh, get into system testing. He wants to know ECE or CSE, which out of these would be the right track for me? See, uh, when you talk about a system, the system comprises of various, uh, various, you know, modules put together. One is the hardware module, the other is the software module, the other is uh, communication module, the other is, uh, you know, AI kind of a module. So even if you choose uh, electronics, it will always have a hardware component to it. And system testing, uh, you can, if you do electronics, you can do both testings together, the hardware and the software testing put together. But if an individual is into computer science only, he'll not be able to do the hardware testing. So you become more, uh, more, you know, sellable, more uh, uh, adaptable to a system. So Padam, I, I think that would suffice your query. Uh, moving quickly on to the next one, that's from Aman. Aman wants to know, after doing electronics and communication engineering, what are the chances of getting a government job? Lot, lot of, lot of all the uh, PSUs like ONGC, NTPC, and uh, lot of, lot of uh, PSUs are wanting electronics every year. Uh, you can, you can move ahead to. Hindustan Aeronautics Limited, you can move on to any state government because all the state governments, they have uh, electronic societies. They have their own, you know, uh, boards which are meant for uh, the electronics uh, improvement or the electronics inclusivity in their governance, in their processes, in their procedures. A lot of opportunities, a lot of government. ISRO is one of the, one of the key you know, places where you can work, DRDO, Defense Research and Development Organization, Space Research Organizations, uh, research labs like CDE and all, uh, you'll, you'll be very well taken if you are into electronics. And, uh, you now should be more confident than before the query is taken up by Dr. Lavita Gupta. Thank you so much, sir. One last question before uh, we'll be um, thanking you, sir. 
um, as uh, this is M Manoj. M Manoj wants to know, as I, I have heard, India is uh, investing heavily in microchips, microchips and ICs, uh, which uh, gives a good hope to this field. Uh, we will, uh, will we be able uh, to get into the industry directly after doing VTech from LPU or some extra hardcore training is required to get into this industry? See, uh, as I said, LPU uh, caters to the wide variety or vividicity. We'll give you a, an open minor of VLSI design, wherein you're going to do six to eight courses on VLSI design. You'll be absolutely and perfectly prepared to go and join in at semiconductors lab and participate in the uh, chip design uh, agenda of uh, Atm Nirvar Bharat and Make in India. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you for sparing uh, time for us and for all the attendees. And uh, the webinar by you was really, really enlightening. Thank you so much, sir. I quickly move on to Ms. Rachna Bajaj. Uh, for uh, the admission part, she'll be taking up the scholarships, the eligibility, and infrastructure. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you so much, sir. I'll just share my screen. Yeah, it's visible now. Okay. Thank you so much. So good afternoon, everyone. I hope you all are doing fine and safe at home. So I'll be just quickly sharing the glimpse of the university, which you will be joining this year or most probably in the coming years. So first up in the list, we have LPU creating history when 12 out of 13 LPU students won Olympic medals. Further, moving ahead with the rankings, as sir has already shared a few of the rankings with the students because this becomes the most important aspect. So I'll just quickly show a few of the figures which LPU has uh, got till date. So first up in the list, we have the impact rankings of Times Higher Education Impact Ranking 2022, where LPU has been ranked 74th globally. Moving ahead with the utter ranking of institutions on innovation achievements, where LPU has been ranked third in India. Another figure, the World University Rankings of 2022, where LP has been ranked 36th among top universities of India. So now, let's talk about the another aspect, which is the campus life and exposure offer. So as a student, make sure that you enjoy your campus life and gain as much as exposure you can. And if I talk about LP students, LP students have got several opportunities to interact with noble laureates and participate not just in national, but international level events as well. So let's show you a few of the events. So first up in the list, we have the 106th Indian Science Congress with a focal theme, Future India, Science and Technology, which was inaugurated by Honorable Prime Minister of India, Sri Narendra Modi ji. Moving ahead, we had Nobel Laureate Dalai Lama ji for the fifth convocation at LPU. We also had former President of India, late Sri Pranab Mukherjee, for the convocation twice at LPU. We had late Sri Arun Jaitli ji for inauguration of LPU Startup School. A very familiar face, a life coach and a motivational speaker, Gaur Gopal Das ji. He interacted with the students and shared some teachings and motivated students about life. Some of the heartthrobs, we had Shah Rukh Khan, we had Deepika Padukone for the promotion of Chennai Express. We had Sonam Kapoor for the promotion of her movie. Coke Studio was even conducted at LPU. MS Dhoni was at LPU and several others. So now let's talk about the infrastructure. You will be making several memories in these blocks, in these uh, classrooms, in, the, in these laboratories. So I'll just quickly show you the laboratories, the infrastructure which is available for our students at LPU campus. So this is an inside view of our laboratories. This You can see a Cisco a networking and communication lab, an inside view of our iMac lab for our students. Google lab is available for our students an inside view of our nine storage central library with approximately 20 lakh books inside and not just this students also have access to these books in online mode as well a view of our amphitheater lp has two to three amphitheaters at the campus for several of theaters booker nataks and etc an inside view of our shanti devi Mittal indoor auditorium with the capacity of 2500 audience being the largest in this region my favorite place, the university mall. Let's take you inside this mall. 
It has all the basic facilities, be it related to dining areas, dominoes, stationery, clothing, electronic gadgets. Apart academics, we want our students to enjoy their leisure time. And for this, we have bowling area and other games facilities inside this university mall. Gymnasium is available. 24 hour facility of ambulance and hospital inside the university campus, be it related to eye specialists, dental facilities, or physiotherapy wards, etc. An outside view of our Shanti Devi Middle indoor state. Stadium with several sports facilities like a proper Olympic level swimming pool, 10 to 12 badminton courts for our students, shooting area, a beautiful picture clicked by one of our students, and a mesmerizing night view of our students. So now let's move ahead with the, another aspect of our today's conversation, which is the fees, the scholarship, and how you can save money. So what you have to do is just simply visit our website, which is www.lpu.in. And on the top, you will see an icon of admissions where we have segregated all the qualifications like after 12, after 10 programs, after graduation and after post graduation for doctorate level programs. So let's say I'm interested in after 12 programs. I just click on it and all the programs which are available at LPU after 12 will be right in front of you. So as we have students from triple E background, I just click on engineering and all the streams related to engineering or uh, let's say it's EC. I'll just show you an overview of ECE program. All the industry collaborative and international credit transfer programs will be available right in front of you. Just click on it and here we have listed all the details, the duration, the eligibility of this program which clearly states a student should a student should have a minimum 60 percent in 12 with physics maths and english as a compulsory subject and need to qualify lpu NIST, which is stated as a national entrance and scholarship test organized by conducted by lpu further moving ahead with the placements you can see the placement records student achievements rankings and the curriculum details for next four years with highlights minors language electives etc so monetary aspect the fees and scholarship although as you can see the fees without scholarship for this program goes one lakh twenty thousand per semester and here we have mentioned some of the scholarships for this program as well let's say if you score between 80 to 89.9 percentage in your 12th or you score 85 more than 85 but less than 90 percentile in jwe you will directly fall in category three that is of 28 percent scholarship and your fees will be directly reduced to 86,400. If you score even better, you score between 90 to 94.9 in your 12th or more than 90 but less than 95 in your JWE, you will directly fall in category 2 that is of 38% and your fees will be reduced to 74,400 per semester. Last but not the least, if you score even better, you score of 95% or, or above in your JWE or 95% or above in your 12th, you will directly fall in category 1, that is of 48%, which will reduce your fees to 62,400 per semester. Let's say you couldn't score well, you have this option of LP NIST as well, because this test is not only for eligibility, but it will also help you to avail better scholarship. So this is the cutoff and the marks required to fall in these categories. Further, moving ahead, we have listed some other scholarships for our students. We have some other special scholarships on the basis of innovation, startup and entrepreneurship for our toppers of education board in case if you fall in the merit list of 12th of this year. Make sure that you share such documents with us on our email ID, which is admissions at the rate lpu.co.in. We also have some financial aid for our students financial aid or need based uh, which covers uh, scholarships for single girl child or single mothers etc we have financial aid for serving retired defense CAPF paramilitary personnel and their dependents we have financial aid to orphans we have financial aid to persons with certain disability so you can share such information with your near ones as well so that they, they can apply for admissions moving ahead with the important dates, the current schedule is mentioned right in front of you. As you can see, that the last day to apply for LPMS exam is 20th June 2022. And further, you will get exam dates between 6th to 25th of June. And within 24 working hours, you will receive your, uh, the result will be shared with you and accordingly you can proceed for admission. So make sure that you register accordingly as per the date mentioned to avail the maximum scholarship benefit. 
In case, if you have any queries, feel free to contact us. Our contact details have been listed on the right side of the screen. Here we have the live video counseling option. We have a schedule a call option. Our WhatsApp team is available for you. And once you scroll down, we have our helpline numbers listed for you. So one more thing, important thing I'll just wind up with. We have already conducted such webinars in past and we have also scheduled some webinars for you. So if you want to register for some more webinars, just click on admissions again. And on the left side, you can see an icon of LPU's EduFlare webinars. So once you click on it, a new icon, a new page opens where we have listed all the webinars for you. And accordingly, you can register yourself for any of the webinar which is uh, scheduled for the upcoming days. So over to you, Rishi sir. I have shared majority of the details with our students. And in case if there is anything uh, left, please let me know. Thank you so much, uh, Madam Rachna. It was very, very uh, resourceful and insightful. Thank you so much. And uh, I see one query over there by Subhicha. Subhicha uh -huh. says, uh, do the students able to choose their projects in particular sector like solar, energy, and so on? I'll take up this query. Thank you, Subhicha. Sure. It's a very nice query. And uh, regarding the projects, yes, I would like to tell you that LPU, in LPU, uh, there are many projects which you have to uh, do for any course you choose over here. And we would uh, like to have a preference of uh, the live projects rather than any of the dummy projects. We would fetch you the uh, live projects from the industry. Yes, you have an option to choose uh, a project of your own as well. If you have uh, some of the resources around you where from wherein you can fetch the projects, there is a committee, we call it a project allocation committee. And you put forward that project uh, to that committee. And if the approval is there, you need to present as well. If there is an approval from that committee, you go ahead with this project and complete the projects and you will be evaluated uh, on the basis of that project only. Yes, full flexibility, full freedom uh, to uh, get the projects of your choice is available in LP. So that was uh, the thing which uh, one query was left. And with that, uh, I'm going to finish and uh, sign off this by saying, um, on behalf of all the attendees of this webinar, I want to thank all the experts, those who presented over here uh, for the insightful presentation. Hopefully the attendees also found this webinar to be valuable enough and will be able to utilize the information provided in this webinar uh, for taking better de decision regarding their admissions. And uh, I would like to again thank Dr. Laviraj Gupta and Ms. Rachna Bajaj for sparing time and uh, giving such an insightful presentation over here. And uh, you are very, very valued for us. Thank you so much. We'll see you in the next webinar. Thank you so much.